Hello, everyone. Welcome to Green on the Greens. It is the Texas Children's Houston Open. Myself, Cody Williams, back for another week uh, as the PGA Tour heads to Texas for a short two-event swing before uh, the Masters at Augusta here in just a, a couple of weeks. Uh, recap, once again, last week, Valspar Championship. I'll be honest, I watched very little of this tournament because of March Madness, and I think that was probably the case for most people. Um, but it did happen. Uh, and I did have a slightly losing week. I did give out one winner, top 20 Taylor Moore, plus 250. That did come through to us. Uh, lost Maverick McNeely, lost Nick Taylor, uh, top 10, top five. Justin Thomas, uh, 14 to one. I think he was a live favorite heading into the weekend, or at least at some point, either early Saturday or late Friday. Yeah. Um, and then he was like, oh yeah, I forgot that I don't know how to putt anymore. And then, uh, completely collapsed on the weekend. So he fell off uh, pretty quickly there. Uh, Cody, you did not bring the sage this week. No, I could not. And to, I told you, you know, I messaged you privately, uh, the bad vibes even continue to my shopping habits because I couldn't even find sage to buy to burn. So yeah, it's, uh, another losing week for me, uh, missed across the board. I was close on at least one, but, uh, Victor Perez top 20, he missed the cut. Great job out there. Frenchman, uh, Brian Harmon, uh, top 10. He missed the cut as well. Thanks for all that ball striking at, uh, the players really showed up at the Valspar. Uh, I was close on a Christian Bezadenho uh, top five at plus 900, but he ended up finishing in the top 10, which pays to go to fansided.com because that's the pick I gave out there with my pick column. And then uh, Doug Gim, he did not miss the cut, but he was nowhere close to the lead. Uh, I believe it was top uh, T67 is when he ended up finishing. So, yeah, not great. Yeah, we march on. Um, you see, you promised a sage. You couldn't get the sage. The store wasn't open. Um I, I wish you the best this week, but I, hey, not you're I, adding on to your bad luck by then now not following through on Burning Sage. Oh, I mean, regardless of this week's go, this week goes well or not, I will have Sage next week and it will be burned because the bad vibes, even if I win a bet this week, are not going away. So we need the Sage de desperately. All right, uh, main storyline I think this weekend about the Texas Children's Houston Open, which from now on I'm just going to refer to as a Houston Open because that's 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 too much of a mouthful. Scotty Scheffler, uh, number one golfer in the world, is back in the field this week. Uh, he's coming off back-to-back -back wins. He has gained strokes putting in those wins, uh, and now this is a relatively weak field. And I don't remember the last time we've seen a golfer this big of a favor to win an event. Has anyone been this big of a favor to win an event since Tiger Woods? I'd have to look into that a little bit. Maybe like John Rahm at the Mexico Open one of those years. Like, I remember he was a big favorite, but Scotty Scheffler plus 250 uh, at that MGM I'm looking at right now. Um, I'm trying to see some other sports books, but it's, yeah, plus 270 fans. So, like, around plus 250 for Scotty Scheffler. So, let me ask you this, Cody. How do we bet Scotty Scheffler, or how do we avoid losing bets to Scotty Scheffler this week? What is generally the strategy for Scotty Scheffler? Because if he puts even average, he's going to win again. I mean, I feel like you almost have to sprinkle on his outright odds. Like, I feel like you have right. to do that at this point. Like, I understand what those odds are, and I understand that the implied probability, I believe, is like 27% or something like that. So, like, I mean, it is absurd, but he is playing that well. The numbers back everything up. We've seen him gaining with the putter as of late. So, like, that was the one hole in his game. That was the one reason he wasn't winning. So, with the way he's striking the ball right now, I think you have to sprinkle at least a little something on his outright odds because I think. I honestly, when you look up for other ways to bet them, there's nowhere that's really that attractive to me. And the only other thing I can think of is if you have a winner without Scotty Scheffler yeah. market, maybe get into there. That's what I was going to bring up. Most sports books, if not all, now offer outright picks for a tournament and then they offer outright without Scotty Scheffler. So if you don't, if you want to just completely avoid betting on Scotty Scheffler, I think the move is to just kind of eat the juice a little bit here, take a little bit less value and bet on the market of without Scotty Scheffler because you could have the perfect pick and it might not matter because Scotty Scheffler might win this event by four strokes. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think almost every single sports book ha has that market now. I know BetMGM does for sure. FanDuel does for sure. Those are just the two I happen to have uh, open in front of me right now. But yeah, plus 250 where he's listed. If you do translate that to implied probability, he has a 28.57% chance of winning this event. And to be honest, I think it's higher than that. Uh, I bet yeah. him. I actually did bet him. I'm not going to give him out as a pick on the show because it's almost just too obvious. Nobody wants. I gave out Scott <sighs> a couple weeks ago. What was it? Five to one? 
Uh, five fifty. I think we I got think a little five extra one juice. Or, yeah, plus five fifty. And I think leading up to that, I was like, we're gonna be like wishing for the days where he's plus five hundred, plus five fifty. Now mm-hmm. here he is, plus two fifty. Uh, I would love to have Scotty Scheffler plus five fifty this week. Uh, I bet him at. I did get three to one at Caesars. I don't know if that price is still available. Uh, and I put like three or four units on him. Uh, I forget the exact amount, but I just loaded up on him. And then if it wins, then I'll just take that. And that would still be like kind of a small win compared to other PGA outrights. And then I'm just gonna you know, obviously bet a full unit on some others uh, and see where that takes me. But yeah, you can do the uh, winner without Scotty Scheffler. Those options are out there. Harrison in the chat says Bovada has uh, Scotty first round at T10. It ties included at minus 120. Yeah, that might not be bad, but I feel like, and I'm going to look this up. I feel like Scotty Scheffler is not that great in terms of first round scoring though. No, he. I feel like he's more of a death by a thousand cuts kind of guy. Like he just methodically chips away where everyone else has more volatility to volatility to them. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to look it up. PGA Tour has these stats, which are I like looking at these when you want to give out first round leader bets or, or place a first round leader bet. Um, I actually took Alex Noren this week first round leader because he's first in the field in, in round one scoring average, uh, mm-hmm. and something tells me. Cantley is the best on the tour this year in round one scoring average, but ah, Scheffler's still sixth. So he's still okay. actually, actually that's better than I thought. Uh, Cause it just yeah, kind of seems like he, he like has a huge round on Saturday and then a huge round on Sunday, but still. Yeah. So if you want to do, I mean, especially with this week of a field uh, of, an, uh, of a field this week, if you want to just do uh first round top 10 minus 120, that could be another way to bet top 10. He said for the full tourney is minus 350. How is that not value? That's 230 cents difference. When most referring to how is the first round not value? Uh, when most other golfers are sixty to seventy, or is that just him getting pounded for total tourney? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it could certainly be that. I'm glad you brought up uh, uh, full tournament top ten because as I've talked about on the show, I've been rolling over full tournament top tens uh, for Scotty Scheffler, um, and it, I was not making much profit by doing it most events when it was minus one sixty five, and now this week it's minus three fifty. So. I don't know. Do I roll over into a top five instead at minus one sixty five, or to stick to top ten and win like twenty bucks on like a hundred and sixty dollar bet? Or what? I think I think it's up to one hundred and sixty dollars now after like four or five events. I don't know what to do. I think you got to roll it into the top five because not only is Scotty Scheffler playing the way Scotty Scheffler's playing. Do you know who hold, who is tied for the course record at Memorial Park? Is it's it Scotty Scheffler. Oh God. <laughs> in 2021, I believe it was in the, uh, one of the rounds of the Houston Open. Yeah, and, I mean, like this is a course he plays well, so like it's just, I think top five is the way you roll that over. Also, back to your point about the short odds, uh, Rom is the only other golfer since Tiger Woods to be sub three to one to win a tournament, and that was at the Mexico Open when he was defending his title in a very weak field. I called that. I didn't even yeah. look into that. I said John Rom at a Mexico Open because I do remember seeing that and being like, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember that as well. I wanted to see. I looked up to see if it had happened any time prior, uh, prior to Rom since Tiger and uh, Justin Ray, who I would trust Justin Ray with my with my life when it comes to golf stats. Uh, he said that no one since Tiger has been sub three to one. Crazy. Uh, Harrison says I'm following along with you on T10 on on the top ten rollover, but I did this week at a book with dead heat rules and jumped in early at minus one eighty. That might have been the move. Switch books and go to one that has dead heat rules. Uh, five just seems so sketchy. Like he's probably going to finish top five, but I, I think I might just stick to top 10 and just minus 350 and win like 40 bucks on a $160 bet. Because if I yeah. do top five and he finishes like T6, I'm going to feel like an idiot and I'm going to say I should have just stuck to my word and done top 10. So I might just have to do it for this week. And uh, we'll, and that, we'll get I mean, back to my. I was going to say there is minus 160 to odds when it gets to the Masters. Like when it gets to the Masters, he'll be back to minus 160 odds. So. Yeah, and I was going to bring up the Masters. Like the one thing that would sketch me out about top five, even though I would probably go that route, but you know, maybe don't follow my advice given how my year is gone. <laughs> but uh, uh, the one thing I would say about why top five would be risky is this is basically Masters prep for Scotty Scheffler. Does he yes. care if he wins the one point six million dollars? No, he made eight point five million dollars in the last two tournaments that he's played. He does not care about this. He cares about major championships and big wins. So like. Yeah. There's a chance that he just honestly does not care that much about this week. It's all about getting what getting what needs to be right, right for the Masters. Yeah. Um, yeah, and speaking of the Masters, I believe, because this event used to be hosted in the fall in November. It's now now. Uh, and I was reading that they are setting up the course uh, to have a similar kind of um, 
uh, layout as as Augusta. So they're, they're trying to actually make this into a Masters warm-up. So it'll be interesting how differently it plays now compared to when it's usually held, which is in mid-November. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that being said, unless you have anything else to add, we can get into our picks, Cody. No, let's get after it. All right, top 20, who do you got? I've got Matty Schmid, who I can confidently say this is the first time I've ever bet on Matty Schmid, but I, I like it too. a lot. I looked at him too. I like it. Yeah, he is. I mean, when I look at this course and what we've seen in history, and like you said, there are some unknowns with the event moving basically five months in the, on the calendar, five, seven, whichever direction you want to go. But it is a bomber's golf course. It is much like the Mexico Open and Farmers where it is a long track, but the rough is not going to be that penal. The rough is, I think they, it was like one and a half inches of rough, and that's not going to grow out a whole lot over the weekend. So like, if you miss the fairway, I don't care. And Matty Schmidt is a bomber. And he's top 50 in driving distance on the season, but he's also played a lot of events where he hasn't been able to drive the ball. We watched him at the players in the Valspar this season, and he's played well there, but it hasn't uh, really played to his biggest strength, which is off the tee. But on top of that, he's top 45 in proximity from 200 plus yards out, which is a big key range this week. You want those long, uh, there's going to be a lot of long iron shots, and he's gaining 0.77 strokes putting over his last eight measured rounds. So I think he's really a nice fit for this for this week. And I think he's being undervalued at plus 350 because I think this is a course that just plays to all of his strengths. All right. I like it. My top 20. I was deciding if I wanted to go top 20 with this guy or take him for close to the win. Oh, by the way, didn't mention last week. Once again, closer to the win are the best picks I give out. And I'm not even betting on these guys myself. Mackenzie Hughes close to the win. I gave out. And what he finished top five T three, something yeah. like that. T4, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, T4 uh, for a close to the win. So if the only thing you've been doing while watching the show since we started back up and the Phoenix was open was just take our close to the wins and bet them like top 20, top 30, or even some of them top 10, you'd be laughing right now. Uh, so I oh, did yeah. win close to the win. Joel Damon did make the cut for you, but I don't think he did much on the weekend, did he? No, no. His uh, his putter is uh, a apart. tough scene right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I've taken the the lead and closest to the win uh, four to two. Uh, with Mackenzie Hughes this past week. Uh, so I was considering the guy I'm about to give out for top 20. I was considering him to, to take him close to the win, uh, but I bet on him, this guy, to win outright as well at 150 to 1. So I said, for the show, let me give out a top 20 form. Carl Yuan. I'm oh, yeah. 4 to 1, top 20. Like I said, I also sprinkled a very small amount on him to win at 150 to 1. He had a great week last week, finished T5, gained strokes in all four major areas. Really what's let him down for the most part this season is his putting. His putting was completely atrocious there for a stretch, uh, but he got back to about an average putter this past week, uh, and I think he is a great course fit. Uh, he is long off the tee, which is fairly important uh, at this course. He's good with his long irons. Uh, he's really good around the greens, which I hear is going to be big this week, specifically with kind of how they've done the roughs around the greens uh, to help uh, prepare people for the Masters. So I think that's going to be big. Uh, and he did have a solid performance. He finished uh, T35 here back in 2022, 20, uh, which was the 2023 season, but it was in the fall swing of uh, so November 2022. So uh, if you're looking for a complete off the board long shot to either sprinkle on to win, take top 20 like I am at four to one, take top 30, top 40. Uh, I like Carl Yuan. I'm going to hope that he can carry some momentum from a T5 finish last week into this week into a course that I think actually fits his game a little bit better than Valsberg did. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And also one of the most interesting golf swings in the, on the PGA Tour to watch. He uh, does not swing like a normal human being, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. So uh, fun guy to cheer for as well. Uh, your top 10 bet is a guy who we have picked a lot this season. We did not pick him last week, and then I thought we were going to get screwed because he had a two-stroke lead heading into uh, Sunday. He ended up blowing it. Uh, but you're back on him for a top 10 this week. So we're not asking too, too much. Uh, break down where you like uh, old Cashmere Keith. Yeah, Keith Mitchell plus 300 for a top 10. And, you know, maybe he can play a full weekend uh, well because the past two have been atrocious. He blew up on the players. He was in contention. Like, I believe he was inside the top 10 going into the weekend at the players and then just completely lost everything. And a lot of it's been a short game because the one consistent thing that we've seen from Keith Mitchell and why I'm on him again, because I can't look away from ball striking, is the way he's driving the ball and the way he's hitting his irons right now. 1.68 strokes gained ball striking over his last 20 rounds. And even with like it completely imploding on Sunday, he lost 4.5 strokes with a short game on Sunday at the Valspar, still finished T17. So like that's how well he's striking the ball right now. And maybe I'm crazy, which is 
completely possible given what we've seen on this show this year. But it actually is promising to me that he blew up completely on Saturday and Sunday at the players. It was only one weekend day last week. Maybe we're trending towards zero weekend days where he completely falls off the map. He's ball striking like a top player in the world right now. All I need is an average putting week, an average short game week for him to get there. I think that he is trending towards something, towards potentially contending to win for a full for a full tournament. And so I'm going with the top 10 this week. I can't look away from how good his ball striking has been. Yeah, his rounds have been wild. I think it was Mexico. It seems every tournament he's been playing in, he has one, like, not even bad round, terrible round, and then three good rounds, or at least two good rounds. Because I think it was the Mexico Open. He actually, the bad round was the first round. He had a terrible mm. opening round and then fought back and finished T19 on the week. So uh, he's just got to string together four good rounds and not, or at least even if he has one off round, it's like shoot like even par instead of like five over. Um, yes. And then he, he can he can win or at least have his name in the conversation. So uh, I'm glad one of us uh, is on Keith Mitchell because um, I wouldn't be surprised if he if he finally puts it together for four rounds and wins an event. Yeah. Um, my guy, uh, my pick for top ten. Do you know who ranks second on the PJ Tour right now in strokes gained approach? I do not. Hit me with it. Number four, number one is obviously Scotty Scheffler. Right. I knew number I'm, one. Of course, I'm taking the number two guy in strokes gained approach this week. Oh, Hoge. my God. We're investing in Hoge some Hoge coin again. Tom oh Hoagie ranks number two on the PJ Tour in strokes gained approach, um, which was a little bit surprising to me. But if you look at his profile, he's gaining significant strokes every single week with his approach game. Uh, but then he loses strokes in one area, and it kills him. It's mostly been around the greens, which is where he's been losing his strokes, which does make me a little bit nervous this week because I think around the greens is going to be big. Uh, Players' Championship, he, he finished T54, lost – 0.6 strokes per round around the green, but 2.18 strokes per round off the tee, which is uh, atrocious, which what killed him that week. But before that, he had gained at least a, a couple strokes uh, off the tee. But at the end of the day, I can't look away from a guy who's playing in a weak field, who's second uh, on the tour, not just second in the field, second on tour and strokes gain approaches season. His irons have been completely uh, dialed in. Uh, so I'll take him to finish in the top 10 of plus 375. And you know when a run the green play isn't going to matter if he's in the middle of the green every time he hits an approach shot. Right. So, Fact. you know, like, I mean, around the green, like, I understand the importance of it. And, like, yes, it is going to be important this week. But one of the things about it is, is, like, it can be a little misleading. Like, if you have someone who's gaining that bigly on approach and they have one shot that misses the green or two shots and they, they you know, they don't stick it in close on their uh, chip or whatever, that's going to really hurt their around the green numbers. But overall, you're still happy with that performance. So that's – uh that's one of my one of my big things with around the green play. Yeah, and I don't think people uh, uh, have realized how well he's been playing in terms of finishes. Uh, T17 at the American Express this season, T6 at Pebble Beach, T17 Phoenix Open, solo 8th Genesis, T12 Arnold Palmer Invitational. So uh, and some of those obviously big-time events. Uh, Pebble mm -hmm. Beach uh, was signature event, Genesis signature event, Arnold Palmer signature event, uh, and he's finishing a right around the top 10 mark. Uh, and all of those starts. So with a weaker field, plus 375 for uh, for Hoge coin here, uh, I like it quite a bit. Yeah, uh, he loves the big money events, apparently. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, all right, top five. Top five, I'm I'm getting a little aggressive, uh, but I'm going with Jake Knapp uh, to finish top five at plus 800. Uh, when, you, when I've been looking at this course and what I know about the Memorial Park, the two biggest comps I've seen from the 2024 season are the Mexico Open at Vedanta and the Farmers Insurance Open at Torrey Pines. Well, what did Jake, Jake Knapp do with those two? Well, he was T3 at Farmers and he won the Mexico Open. I think that this is a course that ideally plays to his strengths. Like you look at what he's done and the like at the players and the API, his ball striking numbers went way down. And that's because there's a lot less room for error off the tee. He's long as can be top 20 in driving distance on the season, but he's not very accurate. That's not going to be a problem here. And when he's playing out of short rough and when he's playing out of the fairway with his long drive, his iron play really shines there. He's actually been a consistent gainer around the greens and with his putting. His short game is kind of underrated. I think this is a perfect fit for him. He's gained 1.1 1 .1, or excuse me. Uh, he is gained he gained 11 strokes ball striking at Mexico and 6.3 at Farmers. I think that is really what plays into account here like when you think of what you need to succeed there, it's distance and it's long iron play. That's what we're going to see from him this week. And I think top five is very much in the question, especially as he's kind of fallen off the radar after two lackluster performances. Yeah, obviously those like, yeah, previous two performances would be, would be the red flag about him. But I mean, three top five finishes uh, since the farmer's insurance and one of them a win and of course fit makes sense. So 
Yeah. Not going to argue too much about Jake Knapp. I personally stayed away when I looked at him just because those, those two recent starts make me a little nervous. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I'm, I think I'm getting a little bit of value there at a plus yes. 800 number, given that, especially in this field. Yes, I say that. And also my top five pick is a, is a guy who also hasn't had two um, very good starts recently. So I'm just going to be a hypocrite today. Uh, but I'm going to go uh, Jason Day to finish in the top five mm. plus 500. Um, obviously a big name guy that I don't think a lot of people are giving a lot of love this week. Um, he is fifth on the odds list to win uh, or sixth, actually. Um, and I know he is coming off two bad performances, T36 at the API, T35 of the players. Before that, though, ninth of Genesis, T6 at Pebble Beach. And if this is a master's comp in terms of at least how they're setting up this course, then Jason Day should do well. Because Jason Day, even though he hasn't won the Masters, uh, does have a good history at the Masters. And he was actually going to be one of my picks. Now, that's now going to depend on how he performs this week um if he doesn't perform well i might have to get off jason day for augusta here in a couple of weeks if he has a good performance this week i'll definitely be, be uh, betting on jason day um his approach game has not been great uh but he's been good everywhere else uh he's been driving the ball well his short game has been really good especially his putting for the most part this season uh has been really good uh, and he has a decent history uh at this course as well um if i can just bring it up i think i accidentally closed that tab uh, but I think he has a couple top 20 finishes here at this event. Yeah. Uh, it's a T16 and a T7. Yes. T16, T7. T16 of the last uh, time uh, uh, this event happened. And then T7 uh, when the Houston Open came to this event in 2020. So, uh, yeah, good course history. The only thing that does concern me a little bit is the two recent starts. But uh, I think he might get back on track this week. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of Masters odds, if you like Brooks Kepka at all, you need to go bet him now because he's 20 to 1 uh, Masters odds, which feels uh, disrespectful, I think is probably the way I would Well, how has he been playing in uh, in uh, Live? Because to be fair, he I think he like won the last event before the Masters last year for Live. Correct. And, and, and then he had a good Masters. So like, I'm curious how good a form he's in right now. We'll find out next week, but I would be willing to take that bet just because Brooks Kepka, when healthy, is all I'm really looking for. Is he healthy? Right. And he seems like he is. And like we, even when he was, even when he's on the PGA Tour, it would always be a thing of, oh, Brooks doesn't really look like he's in the best form, and it's like right. he doesn't care about these PGA Tour events. He doesn't care about live golf events. He's already got his money, so right. he just cares about the glory. And if he does play well at uh, at the next live event right before the Masters, his odds are going to get short. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good tip. I might actually go bet that because, I mean, I would much rather bet Brooks Kepka at 20 to 1 than Xander Shoffley at 20 to 1, who's also 20 to 1 right now. Jordan Spieth at 18 to 1, Victor Hovland 18 to 1. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather take Brooks. <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. Um, all right. Who's your pick to win? This week it's Siwoo Kim, 30 to 1. And. Let's be clear, Scotty Scheffler probably going to win this event, but his odds on Bet MGM with uh, without Scotty Scheffler are still twenty two to one, still like those, and it just feels like something big is coming for Siwoo. He's been a guy who traditionally throughout his career has just popped up big, and he always shows you signs. And his last two starts, T thirty eight API, T six at the Players. He's one of the best drivers on the PGA Tour, but. One of the things I'm looking at is how well he's just overall ball striking. He finished T30 at the API when he lost more than eight strokes putting that week. That's, I mean, that's an impressive thing to do to lose eight strokes putting and still finish top 30. And I, he's gaining 1.19 strokes ball striking over his last 20 rounds. But I think that that doesn't really just, or doesn't really go to uh, give him credit for how well he's been striking the ball. He's gained more than 3.5 strokes ball striking in six of his eight events in 2024. And on top of that, when you look at the numbers, the plus two, uh, the proximity from 200 plus yards, he is above tour average there. I think he's one of the most accurate drivers of the golf ball with also having good distance. He's in the top half of the PGA tour and driving distance. I think it all just matches up to where he's trending towards something big this week. And I think he shows up and, contends maybe he doesn't beat scotty scheffler but i think he's going to be at the top of the leaderboard yeah i like it uh i looked certainly looked at see Woo kim um but for my winner i went a little bit of a different direction and there's a guy who was actually a pretty popular pick this week and i actually got him at 25 to 1 i don't know if a 25 to 1 is available out there anymore uh Probably i don't not. think so uh because even now i'm looking at bet mgm he's 20 to 1 uh pga or a uh, fan duel oh he's down to 16 to one to that fan duel so i got a good number on this guy early in the week yeah. um search around i don't have all the sports books in front of me see if you can get like 22 to one somewhere maybe 
but Sahith Thigala uh, is going to be my pick to win, uh, especially I, I love him at 25 to 1, which I was able to get him on once again uh, early Monday morning. Uh, he is actually playing extremely good golf, and not enough people are talking about it. His last four starts, fifth T37 at Genesis, not great, but then T6, T9. Uh, so three top 10 finishes in his last four starts, and uh, two of them were signature events in the Phoenix Open. Uh, had a pretty solid field as well. So he has been playing extremely good golf. His putter is off the off the charts. His putting is his approach and uh, at, at the la at his last start of the players gained 1.19 uh, strokes per round with his approach game. And this uh, this course seems like a great fit for him as well. He checks every single box that you want for an outright pick. Um, he's long off the tee. He's played this uh, course in the past. He hasn't had extremely good success. Um, but at this event, Sahith has finished 22nd and 61st. So 22nd the last time. Um, and I don't even know if he had his tour card when in 2021 when he got the 61st. So 20, 22nd is last time. So he has some course experience, course fit, great form. Check, 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 check. Um, Sahith Thigala. And who I like to, and I've talked about this website in the past, Data Golf, which is where I do most of my research. Uh, their pre-tournament model has saw a third on the odds list behind only Scotty and Wyndham. So, and I think their model comes out Monday night. And at least from what I've seen, the odds change right after the models come out. So I think that's probably why I saw this odds dropped uh, mm -hmm. or it got better, whichever way you want to look at it. But I got him at 25 to one. I like him 20 or 20 or longer. Uh, I like saw it this week. Yeah, and uh, go bet it now because BetMGM at 20 to 1 is the only place with uh, 20 to 1 or better. Wow. Uh, FanDuel, DraftKings, Bet Rivers, Bet365, all those are all 18 to 1 or lower. Um, honestly, he's probably my favorite play for the without Scotty Scheffler market, where he's 16 to 1 on BetMGM because that's not that much, you're not losing that much value, especially in comparison to other books. So I would take a look at that for sure. But you already know I'm in on Sahith this week. I, you know, he was. I was going to play him for a top five, I believe, but I like the winner pick. Like, I think that he is a perfect fit for this course. And he has, he has solved a lot of the problems that were with his game. One of the yes. biggest being his inconsistency. Like he was just so volatile from round to round. And I think he has really raised the floor quite a bit. So I love him this week. Yeah. I just checked Caesars too. Caesars is all the way down to 12 to one. Um, oh so yeah, God. 20 to one at Ben MGM go bet that. Cause even that compared to the rest of the market is, um, is a good price. And if you're going to sign up at Bet AMGM, go click on one of my articles at BetSide and click an affiliate link, please. There you go. And maybe one day this show will be sponsored by Bet MGM because we do like Bet MGM because they do pay all ties in full. Exactly. Um, all right. So, Sai Thigala. Um, sorry, 25 to 1 is no longer available. 20 to 1. I still like him at that price. If it's, if Bet MGM goes too short, shorter than that, I don't know if I'd play him much shorter than 20 to 1. Um, all right, let's do close to the win. I got a 4-2 lead and close to the win. Uh, if this is your first time watching the show, we both pick a golfer who's at least 100-1 to odds or longer to win. Uh, and whoever finishes further up the leaderboard, a.k.a. closest to the win, uh, gets a point that week. So it's just a way for us to uh, give you some guys that we like who are completely off the board. It's completely up to you if you bet them uh, and how you bet them. Uh, based on how they've actually done for us this year, you should bet them. Uh, top 20, uh, bet MGM I know has top 40 market. Uh, which you can probably get plus money on these guys. I know some sport, sports books have top 30 markets, uh, but actually this season, I'd say the best picks we give out have been close to the win. So uh, who's your close to the win this week? He's a guy who I've chosen in the past. Yep. And it was another guy. It was between, like I basically flipped a coin between him and Matty Schmidt for top 20 and close to the win, much like you, but uh, Robert McIntyre, Bobby Mack, uh, just like the way he's playing. The players was a disaster ball striking wise, but I'm not worried about it because Five of his last six measured events, he's gained ball striking. And once again, going back to the course comp of Mexico, he finished T6 at Mexico. And more importantly, I think that it really gave me a lot of faith in him that he gained, he finally gained putting on Bermuda last week at the Valspar when he had another decent finish. But more importantly, I said that that 200-plus yard range on approach was very crucial. He's first on the PGA Tour in proximity from 200-plus yards out. So yeah. I really love his fit here. I think that we've seen him play well in this type of golf course, especially with the short rough. I think that Bobby Mack at 120-1 to 1 is someone who I would definitely consider for a top 20. I'm going to look up his top 40 odds while you give me your closest to the win, though. 
Yeah, that T6 is when I picked him to finish close to the win. So hopefully that carries over. Um, so I talked, uh, asked you earlier who was second on the PJ Tour in strokes gained approach. Uh, it was Tom Hoagie, one obviously Scottish Scheffler, three Shane Lowry. Um, you will never get this, but I'll give you an opportunity to guess. Who do you think is number four right now on the PJ Tour in strokes gained approach? Uh, let's go with Parker Cootie. <laughs> no, not, no, not right. <laughs> uh, Ryan Moore. Is fourth oh on the PGA God. Tour in strokes gain approach. He jumped up, I think, 27 spots, if this is right, just from last week. So uh, if I'm going to bring up his profile here, he must have just had a massive week with his approach game last week. But that makes me like this bet even more. Uh, yeah, he did. He gained 2.32 strokes uh, per round with his approach game last week, finished T5 at Valspar. So another guy like a Carl Yuan, I think they were both T5 last week at the Valspar. Both had very good uh, tournaments with their approach game. And that's good enough for me when I'm looking at someone 100 to one odds um, or longer. Um, does Ryan has did Ryan Moore play here? Uh, yes, no, he did not. This is Ryan Moore's first time playing this event, or at least since since it moved to Memorial Park. But uh, obviously, great form. If he can carry his form even a little bit from last week into this week, he's going to be. Uh, if you want to sprinkle it something like a 100 to one long shot, or take a guy like him top 40, uh, that's a good enough reason. For me sometimes you don't need to dive too deep into data sometimes uh it's literally just find a guy who's in good form who's still at super long odds yeah sometimes it's that easy and that's and what i'm trying to do this week actually most of my close to the win picks i underthink them and they work so plus 130 to finish in the top 40. maybe we think too much ian maybe that's our we problem might. We might, <laughs> but uh, both these guys are plus one thirty to finish top forty on BetMGM. There you go. So. Bet them both. Just one of them finishes in the top forty. That's it, and you're walking away with a profit. Yeah, exactly. So, and with how these picks have gone, you might cash both. So, yep. so there you go. Um, I don't know. We, last week we didn't talk LPGA. I'm not going to put you on the spot and have a pick unless you do. But there was a golfer this week on the LPGA that I want to quickly talk about if I can. Please go ahead. And I do, I do not have a pick. You're All right. correct there. So last week, uh, I didn't give out any pick. Uh, two golfers finished uh, T8. Uh, Runyon Yin uh, had the solo lead heading into the 18th hole in the third round. She triple bogeyed and then just did not bring it together uh, for round four. Nelly Korda ended up winning. But there's a golfer that I need to bring up to the good folks here this week. who was available at 30 to 1 at Caesars. I think 28 to 1 at BetMGM. Uh, I bet her 30 to 1 at Caesars. It is Allison Lee. Um, and I am betting on three different women with the last name Lee this week, coincidentally. Uh, but Allison Lee, listen to this last week. At last week's Fear Hills Siri Pack Championship, she gained 27.9 strokes on the field from T to Green, 16 more strokes from T to Green than the next closest golfer. Oh my God. How the many issue she was she lost, green? she lost 15.8 strokes on the green. Oh my God. I have never seen someone play this well with their approach game and this bad on the greens. She gained 16 more strokes than the next closest golfer, Tita Green. I didn't watch this event, but she must have just been striping the ball and then just like missing five foot putts every single hole. So I'm betting on her 30 to one. If she could even like just lose like five strokes instead of 15.8, she would have ran away with it this past week. Like her T to Green play, I like I'm questioning if there's if there was an issue in the stats when they uploaded it on on LPGA's website because I don't know how someone can physically gain 27.9 strokes on the field from tee to green. That doesn't make sense to me. No, that's I mean that's one of the most absurd stat profiles I've ever right. heard in any sport ever. Like I like I can't even like fathom that. I'm going to look it up to see if it's changed, maybe it was a glitch, but she did end up finishing T3. Um and like I said, instead of like 15 losing 15 strokes on the green if she would have lost like even 10 strokes on the green instead she would have won this event so uh let me look this up one more time to make sure they haven't fixed this since then um well it's not a good sign that i go to look up the stats and they've taken down the tournament stats from last week not not a good sign these stats okay. are up this morning i made my picks based on these stats and now the stats are no longer posted on lpga's <laughs> website so maybe it was a glitch i'm now concerned because all my all three of my picks were based well two of the three were based on stats from last week so that's concerning uh stay tuned maybe that was a glitch because gaining 27.9 strokes t to green doesn't physically make sense but going on the underthinking she finished t3 last week she's she did in great form t3. no matter doesn't matter how she did it it's great form so we love to see it 
Well, I mean, if, if I, if I, what if I just go to her, like her personal profile? I wonder if they're still on there. No, uh, no, they have been all of all, yeah her stats yeah removed. It's all been removed. Oh no! Oh no! This is going Damn. poorly. <laughs> Regardless, she finished T three. She's in good form, so that's going to be the pick I'm going to give out on the on the show for this week. Thirty to one, twenty eight to one, depending on where you look. Allison Lee to win the Ford Championship this week. Love it. I'll ride it with you. All right, let's I go. trust you. You're the LPGA Sharp of the century, so. I appreciate that. Let's go. Let's let, let's get a second win in 2024. Um, all right. That's our show. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Next week is the Valero Texas Open. Yep. TPC got, Craig Ranch. Perfect. Uh, Corey Connors, defending champ. Yep. And uh, champ. your boy KH Lee, TPC Lee, always plays well there as well. So might be might be closest to the win next week or maybe a top 20 we'll see oh no he's gonna be like 30 to 1 the odds makers know yeah. that uh when you get uh tpc lee out there it's yeah. it's all bets are off fact um <laughs> all right any final thoughts before we close things though no man this is gonna i think i'm excited to see this golf course i like i think that it's a different brand of golf than what we've seen the past few weeks like bombers have been kind of you know they've been kind of kept in the stables for the past few weeks and we're gonna get to see him let it fly this week so that's always fun yes um and i will now be able to watch the this event because there's no college basketball during the day because it's now sweet 16 so all games are at night so i will be watching uh this event which i'm looking forward to so and like i said i am on alex norn first round leader too do you have any first round leader i'm not a first round leader guy i'm I, uh, not either but I'm, I'm sprinkling on norn this week my favorite first round leader guy is uh, I think it's Chris Towers or Chris or some Chris. I can't I can't place it, but he throws a dart at a dartboard, and that's how he picks his first round leader. Oh bet. yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. So I, that's how I feel about first round leader bets. Is it's a dart throw? Yeah, it is completely a dart throw. It's yeah, Christopher Powers at CP at C Power yeah. fourteen. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, because it is a dart throw, quite literally for him. Um, yeah. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe to the Bet Side of YouTube channel um and we'll be back uh for the valero texas open next week and then the masters can't wait take care gambler bless good luck with all your picks goodbye friends